I said it in my last read and reviewed, my reading year is going so well right now. 2019 is great. And that means I have three more books to share with you that I have read in 2019. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Think and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic work week hump day. Everyone's halfway done and I hope that you've been able to sneak in a little bit of reading. As I said in my preamble, I have really been reading so many great books this year and I have three more to share with you. So as always, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your good reads, however you keep track of your TBR. Also, if you can, order them from your local independent bookstore or get your library to order them for you so that you guys can get these books in your hands as soon as possible. So let's get started. I have actually two historical fiction and one fantasy novel to tell you about. The first book I'm going to tell you about is At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Postorino. This is translated from the Italian by Leah. Leah sent me an email to help me with her last name, Junesco, Junesco. Um, she has a Polish last name, she tells me. So Leah Junesco is the translator of At the Wolf's Table. Now, so this is technically inspired by the group of women that were, I'm going to say hired, forced, to be <laughs> the um, tasters of Hitler's food before he ate his meals every day. So they would cook the food, these women would taste the food, and then it would go on to Hitler as long as no one got sick. Now, you learn that this uh, the the author had known of a woman that was still alive that was supposedly one of these women, but when she went to interview her, she had already passed away. So this is Rosella Postorino's fictionalized account in her head of how that whole atmosphere and event must have been. So set during World War II, this is really the story of Rosa Sauer. Rosa is a young woman whose husband is away at war. She has just moved in with her parents-in-law and she is taken away to every day be one of the 10 women, I believe, that tastes the food of Hitler. And as it first starts, the sort of the dynamic of the room is very hostile. Sort of these women don't know each other. They're all from sort of the same area. They may have recognized each other. Some of them do know each other, um, but Rosa does not. She's new to town. And there's incidents that happen that sort of create a dynamic within the room. And this is really the story of how those women come together, different things that sort of um, add tension to their situation. Food is scarce on the, uh, on the other side. Um, things are going away. You can't get things. But of course, this food is being prepared for Hitler of the highest quality. You don't know all of the backstories of all these women. They're going through things that are very difficult to go through. Um, in the times of war. A lot of them have lost husbands. Some of them, their husbands are still at war, like our main character. And so she narrates this sort of getting to us all of the different relationships and different perspectives that sort of come into a job that has such um, relevance to keeping a man alive who is running, ru running your country through this war. And what I really liked about it is that not all of these people are so pro-Hitler. There are people, uh, women in this group that are very fanatically pro-Hitler, but there are some that are sort of back. There's people with dark secrets. I'm not going to give any of sort of the twists and turns away because that is part of the reward of this book. Um, and I just really appreciated the story. I thought Rosa Sauer was a very compelling character. I felt for her very much throughout the whole book. And as um, her husband um, and her sort of her husband, she's waiting for him to come back for Christmas, sort of the angst of having not seen him for a long time, what war does to families and situations like that. It's all very well portrayed in this book and the decisions that have to be made, the decisions that just have to be made during a time like this. I really like this book. I will say the ending goes a little bit off for me in just that um, we go into a different sort of time period and things, some stuff has to resolve. And I'm not sure I needed to go there. I didn't mind it, but I could have had the book end before that section and I would have been just as happy 
um, because I think that it had some merit with the um, gravitas of the sort of the end of World War II. But I see why um, the author wanted us to get some sort of closure on some of the stuff. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil anything. I really like this book. I highly recommend it if you just want to read something that is very um, just character driven and uh, very much about relationships and heartache and how all that stuff sort of affects people. I recommend it. So that's At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Postorino, translated from the Italian by Leah Junesco. There you go. I wish everyone sent me uh, phonetic pronunciations of their names because I would feel so much better because I always feel so horrible uh, as I mispronounce names. The next book I've talked about a couple times and I have finished, and that's The Last Train to London by Meg Wyatt Clayton, and this is out from Harper Books. This came, comes out on, sep this comes out, I think it came out, yeah, came out yesterday, September 10th. Um, this is historical fiction set right before World War II. This is the story of a woman who makes it her mission to get as many young Jewish children out of sort of Germany-occupied countries, Germany, Austria, as she can, really before the start of World War II to save them from the concentration camps. This is also a secondary story of Stephen, who is a young Jewish boy in Austria. His family is fairly well-to-do um, when Hitler and the Nazis take over Austria, and we watch sort of the collapse of his family unit, and as he and his brother make decisions on what's going to happen and if they're going to be able to survive the upcoming war. And what it does really nicely is it intertwines the stories, but it also keeps the history right there and sort of the, just the tragedy of what was going on at the time. This book is very sad, you guys. At times you will cry your eyes out, but it's also very hopeful. It's very much the story of a person making a decision that they are going to make a difference. And if you think that one person can't make a difference, people can. This book is based on a real woman who did this during and uh, prior to World War II. Um, and you can sort of read about that in the back of the book as well. Um, and you can learn about her as well and her, her husband. Um, and you learn about the sacrifices she made to save these children and what had to be done in order to get them a place to go. So that's The Last Train to London by Meg Wyatt Clayton. And this is out September 10th, I believe, from Harper. And it's a bit of a chunkster, but I flew through it. I really loved it. Okay, now, all of my fantasy viewers and all of you guys are going to be like, finally, finally, Russell has read a Robin Hood book. And I did. I read Assassin's Apprentice. This is book one in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. Let's start with a couple things. It has been a hundred years, it feels like, since I have read a mass market paperback. I struggled so hard just holding this book and how small I felt the font was. I don't know why, um, but it was really funny. Just it was something that I absolutely re recognized while reading it that I haven't read a book of this size in so long. Um, and books don't come out in this size as much as they used to anymore. So it's really funny. So um, Assassin's Prentice starts a trilogy about a young boy. His name is Fitz. Um, in the book. Um, he is the son of a prince and a common woman. So he is a bastard and he is sort of left at the door of a castle by his grandfather who basically says, I don't want to raise him anymore. He's about six years old. This is his father. You guys do it. And it turns out that that changes the entire political dynamic of the kingdom that this book takes place in. Fitz is then taken back to the main city where the, the kingdom is ruled out of and many, many different things happen to him. His life is very different. It turns out he has some special abilities. Um, uh, he can connect with animals and has sort of a relationship with them. That's one dynamic of his power. He also has another power called the um, the skill, um, which I'm not going to tell you much about because I think that that is definitely part of the amazing uh, plot of this book. Um, and this is, he really is being trained throughout the book. About halfway through, he is trained to be an assassin and uh, by a very 
creepy, clever character. Um, and you sort of get into the dynamic. He's asked to do things, and it's one of those sort of great adventure books. Um, Robin Hobb is another one of those authors that does a great job of creating a world, but doesn't throw it and slam it in your face. You guys know how I struggle with that. When a fantasy book is all world building and no plot, she does not do that. Her characters are compelling. Um, I will say that um, I was never bored. I was never bored. I wanted to know what's going to happen. I will be getting book two before I know it. Um, and it was definitely worth my time. So thank you guys for really harping on me to read Hob and Hob. I think that even if you are not a fantasy reader through and through, that this is a book that you can really dive into. The character development is great. The relationships are great. And the story is just compelling. You just fly through and you don't have to get bogged down in the, the fantasy aspect of it so much that you lose any of the story. So that's Assassin's Apprentice the first Farseer trilogy book by Robin Hobb. So three more books, three more recommendations, three more things that I think you guys should all read if you have a chance. Let me throw that one up there and hold it up there for you guys. As always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, I truly, truly appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, thank you so very, very much. I hope you come back for more. Until next time, I always encourage you to shop locally, read globally, and I wish you happy reading. Talk to you later. Bye.